Hey folks, Serpent Trader here, and I'm back. Well, at least for one more video, and that was just a bit of a clip of some Russian soldiers training to protect their lands from the evil Ukrainian Empire, or something like that. That's what I heard on the grapevine. So, what is happening with Forexpo? You probably heard this news that Third World War is going to start or something. Uh, I don't think it's quite that bad. Um, let's have a quick look at the chart, weekly chart. I drew in this cup formation simply because I was speculating on this falling price and it was sort of flattening out a little bit. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a, a cup. But uh, clearly what we've had down here with this week breaking out, um, that's uh, ideas probably not going to uh, have any traction. Um, I actually sold out all my shares uh, pre ex dividend day um, back when it was actually at its little high. I think I sold out for about 118, 119, uh, 118, 119, uh, 318, 319, something like that. And I bought a couple of days later. Um, Would have been nice if I could have held off for a week or two. I could be picking up a lot more now. A lot lower price. Still, if we look at the daily chart, we can see that we have had a bit of a an up day today. And um, I'm really eyeing this support down here, um, around this sort of 245, 235 level. We've also got this. Uh, long-term support and that support comes right back go back to the weekly quickly it goes right back to uh, right 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 back all the way to the, the super low uh, back in 2015 when Forex were basically going to go bankrupt and the other low um, during the, the COVID sell-off. So that's, that's where I draw on that line of support. And we're, we're quite close to it. I do think it would be some sort of support if we were to get down to it. But uh, maybe we won't because we have had a bit of an update today. So um, if it all blows over in Ukraine, then maybe uh, we've seen the bottom. But uh, let's... Uh, not be too positive let's think that it might go down a bit further so we might be seeing a test down here we we'll have to wait and see still I bought a little bit yesterday and um, I think Forex was about 10% at the moment of my portfolio it's uh, definitely my biggest holding what is this all about then why are the Russians so upset and it's pretty much uh, there's some ulterior motives I'm, I'm sure but uh, the main reason they're saying is because um, of Ukraine's desire to join NATO. For some reason, Russia thinks that NATO is out to get them. And obviously, since the fall of the, um, the Berlin Wall, uh, you've had lots of new NATO members. Germany, all the sort of Eastern European countries. Uh, Turkey joined fairly recently, I think. And obviously, the... Um, the ex-Russian uh, states, uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. The narrative is, is that Russia is, thinks that NATO is uh, out to surround them. It doesn't really make sense, but it doesn't really have to. That is the threat that they perceive. And you would think that they would see, um, you know, a way they're threatening the neighbouring countries. That, that would... Um, be more than enough to encourage them to join a, a defence pack, but that doesn't seem to be on the Russians' mind. So next, we have this uh, useful interactive map, and you can click on little news stories around the area. You can also see uh, where the Russian deployments are. So if you just hover around here, see there's a military deployment area. So you can see the actual extent of the Russian deployment. How accurate it is, I, I couldn't tell you, but it does sort of like 
pick up little news items. It's uh, about that, was it Blinky or Blinken? American Secretary of State. Anyway, it's a uh, gives a little kind of like outlook on the um, stuff that's going on. What's this one? A uh, film of something. Let's mute that. <laughs> um, so the main areas concerned around here is um, um, Donetsk region and this uh, Lunesk. I can't pronounce these words. Uh, they're basically controlled by separatists in any case. Yeah, so these are the two areas that uh, are mainly sort of contested. Uh, they're under the control of separatists. They're pretty much 90% uh, Russian speaking. And they feel they're Russians. If the Russian army sort of rolled in, I doubt there would be uh, that much would really change. There'll be an international outcry, but uh, I don't think it would affect uh, for Expo really. And uh, things would just. Um, pretty much carry on as they are um, probably the most worrying aspect here is that the Russians do have all these troop deployments all dotted around so if they were to move in and it would make sense in terms of an invasion um, you could take all the land sort of like east of this Dnieper river and and it makes sense in an invasion term but I'm not sure if it makes much sense in the, the long-term ambition that Putin has to get all the Russian people under one hat. Because, um, you know, a lot of these people living in these regions, they're not so pro-Russian. As I say, these are the, the main areas that uh, the Russians are interested in um, protecting, taking, annexing, or whatever word you want to use for it. They're the two regions I think they could pretty much easy uh, you know say they did invade maybe they would say we want to take these regions into Russia and you can keep the rest of them and won't bother you again whether that's true or not we'll have to wait and see um, the Forexpo mine is on the wrong side of this uh, Dnieper river and this is where Forexpo is located just on the eastern side of the Dnieper river yeah, you can see where they um, have their mine and where they process and plant. So, potentially, it could come under Russian control. Um, I think that the worst case scenario is that, um, well, the, the, obviously it comes under Russian control. But I, I don't see the Russians sort of stealing the assets. I see them being able to run under you know, Russian control and just pay taxes to the Kremlin. I think it's more the uncertainty that always always worse than the outcome. I'm largely discounting the invasion rhetoric, uh, which seems to be uh, more about the Western media that's making out Putin to be a very, very bad man. What I see as more likely to happen is possibly some sort of limited military activity to get these regions under Russian control and then some sort of negotiated settlement uh, with Ukrainians. What matters is that I think Forexpo will be still in a situation where they'll be able to operate wherever the outcome of this and it's clearly going to remain uh, politically unstable around here. So back to the chart and obviously if there's an invasion it's going to result in some sort of fire sale uh, I would suspect it would plummet past that support and uh, you could be looking at um, uh, this sort of 160 level possibly even a bit less I think that 160 level is where that sort of flag built up yeah, so clearly I don't see this as a case that 
will Russia invade or not? And uh, if they don't, it's all rosy. This is still going to be politically unstable. I prefer just to look at the business and what the cash flows are and will they still be able to pay out profit in the long run? What does Buffett say about a business that he would be happy to own if there was no stock market tomorrow? Morningstar values this at uh, 386, so a 31% discount currently. And it's a four star on the Morningstar. And looking at some of my back of the envelope calculations. So this is um, my quick value calculator I've been working on recently. And uh, if I plug the numbers in for, for Expo into it, um, I think we'll ignore this uh, intrinsic value Montgomery calculation. It's uh, come out a bit crazy because the return on equity is just so insane on this company. But, uh, you know, earning per share, £3.38 comes out. Very simplified discount cash flow method here. Just to have a quick sort of summary of how it um, might come out. And, uh, you know, you've got £7.78. And uh, I've put in quite low growth numbers. Only 1.5 for the next uh, sort of 10 years. Uh, fair value from a dividend perspective. Obviously, dividends might drop in the preceding years. But, you know, £6 looks pretty good. Um, this isn't a monetary value, but it's just a ratio. And basically anything under 1 is overvalued. Over 2 is undervalued. And uh, as you see, you know, we've got a ratio of 7.2. 7 so it's kind of crazy. Even if we cut down uh, the dividend yield, just say it drops to 6. you still got a fair value rating of... Uh, over three, you know, three point eight six, and it still puts it in a, a very undervalued range. So I think for Expo is really cheap. Fairly confident that in the long term, this will be okay. So one last thing that I saw that could be the kiss of death is a positive Monty Fall article on for Expo, dated from last week, twelfth. Um, they're saying about how it's fallen so much and uh, how cheap it's looking. And I agree, it's, it's rare I read a Monty Fall article and agree with everything in it. But um, yeah, I think he's got a point. It is very cheap. <laughs> I just hope it isn't the kiss of death. So to sum up, if Russell was to come in, occupy Ukraine, yeah, there'd be an international outcry. Would for Expo still be operating? I'm pretty sure they would be. It is a geopolitically sensitive area. There are a lot of unknown risks. I just think they're outweighed by the, the cash generated by this. Quite possible if it does sell off, you might be able to get a big bargain. Um, I don't see a war really happening. There could be some limited movements. I just don't see a big war happening. And that's why I have um, the confidence to buy extra shares here. And as I say, 10% of my portfolio is my biggest position at the moment. And I'm quite happy to hold it. And if it goes down lower, I'll probably buy some more. So I think that's all from me. If you did get anything out of the video, then obviously smash the like button, share the video. But smashing the like button would provide some motivation. So hopefully I've seen another video. If not, happy investing. Take care.